So this is another one of those uh, audio podcasts so you can keep trimming your toenails or vacuuming or whatever you're doing. But don't forget to hit subscribe and ring that notification bell because we got more of them coming up and we have a lot of video videos like you can see at the end of this thing. And, uh, you know, a like or a comment wouldn't hurt you a bit. Ahoy there, Bradford here with the reminder, don't forget to go to hownottosale.com slash 32, that's 32, for all kind of stuff, including links to my video interview with Captain Boomies and a major cameo by Christian, as well as a link to Captain Boomies' other latest appearance on the Shooting the Breeze sailing podcast with my friend Captain Jeffrey Wedding. But now, this. Where do we, where do we start this monster? Um... As promised this week, the interview with Captain Boomies and her engineer husband, Christian. It's yeah. the most horrific thing that can happen on a boat. I mean, I'd rather face a fire. Talk about how they got into yachting. I picked sunburn. Yeah, sunburn. Way to be. Way to be. I picked sunburn. <laughs> Heck, maybe I can even talk them into fixing that life vest that auto-inflated when I was paddleboarding. So did you have an audience when you set it off, or were you all alone? I, I did not have an audience till I put it on YouTube. <laughs> We'll just see how it goes. How Not to Sail, sponsored by our awesome Patreon patrons and Latitudes and Attitudes magazine. They ruin my life, so why not let them ruin yours today at latsats.com. Oh, thank you, sir. Yes. You may remember that during the boat show, I had Captain Boomies and her husband Christian aboard J.C. Sales. Well, we got Citra Pale Ale. And I prevailed upon Christian to look at my through hulls. Oh yeah, yeah, you've definitely lost the keyway there. And while I've got a mechanical genius in the house, there's this nice yellow auto-inflatable life vest that needs some attention ever since I took it paddleboarding. I think it would be great audio for you to show me how to put the cartridge back in, in this uh, vest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's embarrassing, but I'm used to it. I'll be honest with you, uh, I've never actually uh, had to reset one of these. So you haven't been paddleboarding with a automatic inflate? No. So just in case you missed episode 28 on how not to paddleboard, I guess it's time for... How Not to Sail 101. When paddleboarding, it is advisable not to wear an automatically inflating life vest, as you might occasionally or often go in the water. Well, f- it, let's just do it while we're here. Couldn't agree more. And Christian and Boomies have a look. I don't, I don't know how it works. Set it's it inside the bag. I've never had to reload one. What the d- shoes? At first, okay. this one presents a bit of a puzzle. <laughs> I'm stumped. And it looks like there might be a small problem. Okay. Well, that's... Yeah, uh, you're missing a piece of the zipper. Unfortunately. Santo cielo, non capisco quello che dici. But thankfully, that piece was just hiding for a second. Oh! Ah. We're in good shape. Look at there! There's just one super important precaution. Don't pull the tab. <laughs> because that would be... <laughs> a, Frustrating. Huge waste of time. (laughs) But Christian gets it assembled without pulling the tab, and I think it's about time for that interview thing. Ahoy, ahoy. I am Captain Boomies, and this lovely individual here is my engineer, Bear. And uh, unwitting husband. (laughs) (laughs) I tricked him. Well, I tricked her to leave college and come on a boat with me, and then... She tricked me into giving her a ring. Oh, joke's on her, the ring's an heirloom. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't cost me a dime. <laughs> Bear is Christian Hollingsworth. And after all the kind help he's given me, I feel like he's gotten short shrift in the last interview or two. So I feel like maybe just this once, he deserves the treatment that we reserve for only the very highest VIPs. He knows the part number for every item on your boat, and he hasn't even seen it yet. He once convinced a dolphin to repack a stuffing box, and sea otters bring him oysters on the half shell, with horseradish and cocktail sauce. Hose clamps tighten under his piercing gaze, and gaskets seal when he steps aboard. He is Christian Hollingsworth. 
So I was uh, a heavy equipment operator in Louisiana. <laughs> I had an 80 foot boom truck. And I was hanging signs and doing a little bit of uh, Katrina relief. And uh, someone told me I could make $100 a day cash washing boats in sunny Florida. And I said, F this machine and left. <laughs> I sold everything I owned and packed my entire life into two duffel bags and went to Florida. If that seems like an unlikely way to become a chief engineer, just remember that things were different way back in the early 20 aughts. Back when I was getting started, everything was done on a handshake. So you would say, I know what I'm doing. And they'd say, OK, and we'll see. And you'd get hired on. And then you could either you know, <laughs> meet those expectations or fail miserably. Christian did not fail miserably and kept meeting expectations until he was the chief engineer on a 160-foot boat with two people working under him. Every day I would go back to my cabin and go, what the f***? <laughs> I can't believe they hadn't figured this out yet, but I kept doing okay. And then he met a certain young lady. I grew up sailing and then started teaching sailing. And then there was this big white boat in my way every day teaching sailing. And uh, there happened to be a hot guy on it. And they convinced me to take that. 100 footer down to Fort Lauderdale, and I was really good at it. But Captain Boomies didn't get to become a mega yacht captain right off the bat. I started as a deck stew, which is the worst job you can possibly have in yachting. Just like that reality show on TV, you have your interior team and your deck team. And the deck stew just gets whatever the worst jobs are from both teams. Yeah. So you have to decide, do you want to scrub away piss driblets or do you want to scrub away salt spray with a sunburn? And uh, I picked sunburn. Yeah, sunburn. Way to be. <laughs> Way to be. <laughs> I picked sunburn. But eventually, Captain Boomies did become captain of large white mega yachts and Christian became chief engineer on same. And as you can imagine, they have some pretty sound advice for boaters and would-be boaters. Leave your captain's license at home. <laughs> so we're supposed to have a license? No. <laughs> no, it's just highly encouraged. Mm. <laughs> Seriously, having a captain's license is cool and all, but there's also a lot of responsibilities that go along with that. If you're taking money, you have to yeah. have it. Yeah. But if you're not going to take money, don't get it. It's not worth it. In fact, Captain Boomies may or may not have developed a technique for making sure things don't get too serious. I have a safe boater certificate from my state, and that's what I show to the DNR. <laughs> so the cops show up, they get my safe boater certificate, they do not get to see my captain's license. Seems like sound advice to me, because theoretically owning a boat's about fun and not stress. You know, don't get too caught up in um, all of the advice and mantras and YouTube videos and experts out there, because odds are whatever way you think is going to work is going to work, and you're going to be just fine. And the whole point of this is to have fun and enjoy yourself and not be stressed about did you do something the you know, ship-shape way. So just enjoy the boat because otherwise why the hell did you buy it which reminds me i need christian to help me understand what's going on with my boat someone in your marina is putting out a lot of stray voltage and that stray electricity is eating all of the in your case you have silicon bronze it's eating all the zinc out of your silicon bronze and all of your through holes are or, well all your ball valves on your through holes uh the shaft has a little key on the stainless steel ball and that has cracked off and now all of them are worthless. Okay, explain it again in a way that I will pay attention to. See, this is what I'm talking about with the pronouns. <laughs> the thing is all f***ed up and the shit don't work no more. Got it. <laughs> that is perfect. It gives me something to bleep. So yeah. <laughs> While we're all in such a good mood, I figure I should ask our intrepid engineer, how does my vessel compare to the average cruising vessel? I think you're right in the area that I suspect most people are. They've got a boat, they do their best to take care of it and clean it and maintain it. It's comfortable, it's livable, and uh, by far not the dirtiest I've ever seen. I mean... Uh, thanks? 
I've been on boats where you're like pushing away stalactites of mold as you climb through and there's dog hair everywhere and rotten sewage. So this one's great. This one's, this is, I'm dry, I'm comfortable and nothing smells. Well, I suppose that's an accomplishment because since the water intake to the head isn't working, I have to use a bucket full of water to move things through. Yeah, I think you could do the old bucket and chuck it and not even worry about it. <laughs> that's, that's what I hear. <laughs> oh. Then no, we'd have that. more finless browns in the... In yeah, the you don't want that. You don't want that. You're going to have to start eating a nickel with every meal to keep it down at the bottom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good point. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're so gross. What? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Clearly, everybody aboard J.C. Sales today has a healthy attitude towards these matters, and you kind of have to because it's part of the cruising life, even if poo isn't our favorite thing. It's it's the most horrific thing that can happen on a boat. I mean, I'd rather face a fire. That seems a little extreme to me. Until I come to learn why Christian feels that way. I was on a boat one time where a a contractor had uh, just committed a brown hate crime in in the head. And there was nothing we could do to unclog it. (laughs) So we vacuumed out what we could from the top. And then I, being the the mongoose that I am, rather tall and thin, (laughs) I had to go into the master salon, uh, sorry, master cabin, open their closet, and there was a little access panel in the back of the closet, and behind that was yet another little Alice in Wonderland hatch. And in there, I could get between the outer hull and the interior walls of the boat and couldn't take a deep breath. That's how thin we were. And I have to reach up, and I ask several times, as he vacuumed everything out of that head and he assured me he had. So I get the hose off the bottom of the head loose, open it up, and I am showered with about a gallon and a half of just nightmares. And I, it took me 10 minutes to get into this hole. So I had to just kind of take it. And to hear it from the captain, he was just up in the wheelhouse and all of a sudden he hears, (laughs) just coming from down low. And he ran down, pulls me out of there. I ran off the boat, jumped overboard, and then spent the rest of the day showering. And uh, I still don't feel clean. (laughs) Well, as long as it's nothing to do with my boat. Meanwhile, Captain Boomies has a story on how quick thinking saved her some of the embarrassment. So mine is a, it doesn't have anything to do with anybody else's holding tank, but my own. But it was a very fancy yacht party uh, that I somehow scored an invitation to. Um, And I was super excited to be there. My boss had invited me. I never get invited to the fancy parties, so I was all in. I had my cute cocktail dress on. I was ready to go. And as soon as you step on this yacht, the, the crew is amazing, and they shove a champagne glass in your hand and you're just downing the best bubbles and you're having such a wonderful fancy time and i'm like a magnum deep and i'm gotta use the head and the line for the head though is stem to stern (laughs) it is gonna take a very long time much longer than i have (laughs) so i start making my way to the gangway figuring i just got to get off this boat and nobody should invite me to fancy parties (laughs) because I can't be trusted but as I'm getting to the gangway I get stopped by my boss and he's like oh captain you have to meet somebody and he introduces me to a prince a literal royalty prince (laughs) no joke sash and everything with the spangly stuff prince and I'm definitely starstruck but I'm also bursting my tanks are pressed (laughs) like I cannot spend another second here Um, but then the prince tells a joke and everybody's supposed to laugh politely and I I do my best to laugh and a little comes out and I'm like oh no and I feel it coming down my leg and the prince tells another joke and I do my polite laugh and a little more comes out and I I'm totally screwed at this point. Uh, So I have a moment of brilliance and I take my champagne glass and I throw the rest of my champagne on my crotch and pee (laughs) and run for the gangway going, oh, oops, I spilled. And 
absolutely made a beeline for it. I was completely mortified. I don't think I came out of my cabin for the rest of that trip. Uh, I, I've never been so horrified with myself ever. And also slightly impressed at my uh, quick thinking. <laughs> I should just keep like a chocolate shake handy. <laughs> just in case. Just in case. This kind of humor may explain why I sail by myself so often. Sailing solo, though, you still get to bitch at the crew. It's just more fun, you know? <laughs> oh, and trust me, I do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Of course, there are times when it's unwise to bitch at the crew members. So I was on a boat, and uh, it was a, we had a whole fleet. There was uh, three boats in the fleet, and I was the engineer for the two little boats. The chief engineer on the big boat kind of ran the engineering program for the whole fleet. He was Russian, and he had hired a guy he knew. This guy was Chechen, and I'm pretty sure they don't get along, but for some reason, these two were friends. The fellow was about the age you'd expect uh, Chechen to be to have fought in one of the civil wars and that's some real hard living. Unfortunately for Christian, if a crew member were to, say, dump some oily bilge water into a very delicate marine head that has a biological agent in it that doesn't respond well to oily bilge water, it's his job to chew them out. He also managed to clog the head with a rag and I was furious. I think Ray Charles could probably see where this is going, as my friend Theron would say. I lose my temper and start screaming at this man who's a little older than me, certainly harder than I am, and he starts yelling back at me in his thick Chechen accent, and we are now nose to nose, about to fist fight when I realized he's probably killed before, <laughs> and he would not hesitate to take me down, and I had to very delicately back down without losing face and I um, think I failed. I'm like a tiny bit worried that they can figure out what boats you're talking about based <laughs> on the sizes. They got bigger fish to fry what with their crashing into things. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. This yachting thing sure is a strange business. But that reminds me, I'm still planning to haul out my boat to fix those through hulls. So, uh, thumbnail assessment of the prognosis for this little haul out and stuff. I have every faith in this vessel and this captain to make it from here to across the bay to the yard to get hauled out. Uh, when they get launched back in, we'll have to see for ourselves. <laughs> I suppose we will, if I ever get over there. It won't be this week, because the tide's too low. But you know I'll keep you posted. Make sure you're subscribed to How Not to Sail on your favorite podcast app so you'll have the next episode right on your gadget or computer on March 11. I'd uh, tell you what it's about, but my recording software had the virtual equivalent of a gallon of holding tank water poured on it. And we're screaming into this Friday release on two wheels. Thanks, as always, to our awesome Patreon patrons and Latitudes and Attitudes magazine. They ruined my life, so why not let them ruin yours today at latsats.com. Don't forget to go to hownottosale.com slash 32 for the show notes to this episode. In fact, you can find everything How Not to Sail at hownottosale.com, including a store where you can get cool merch, the contact tab where you can leave a voicemail or an email or get on the email list, the audio podcast, the YouTube channel, and the book. So what are you waiting for? I'll see you at hownottosale.com. It's really a no-brainer, which is exactly how I like it. I sure do appreciate you listening and telling your friends, remember if it's pink, it's eating your zinc. And I'll see you next time on How Not to Sail. Screwing up is part of cruising. Let me show you how. As soon as the project was done, I got very bored very quickly and split. <laughs> I always just want to be in the yard tearing things open. The whole wearing uh, you know, the epaulets and doing all the silver service was really not for me.